The way I like to explain this is um, I'm a different person to each one of my patients. And um, I become uh, a different manifestation of previous relationships over the course of treatment. So in any given hour, um, I could be experienced by one patient as uh, a benevolent father who they can graciously receive protection and safety and warmth from. And I can also be experienced as uh, a competitor that needs to be defeated, right? And so there's, we're negotiating in those moments um, the back and forth of idealization and devaluation, right? That's often seen in a narcissistic style of relating. Um, <clears throat> if you can't beat them, join them kind of a thing. Um, and seeking to understand where those enactments are emerging, why that relational dynamic is important in the therapeutic hour um, becomes a point of curiosity for the psychodynamic therapist. Okay, so we're wading in pretty deep here with theory stuff. How are we doing? Are you guys tracking with me? Is this making sense? What questions do you have? I trust that a lot of this is, is review at this point. Mm. Or at least a reminder. I guess I'm wondering like, what curiosity actually looks like. Um, is that just uh, like you like realize I was a bit competitive in that like, way? Like, I've had that come up in me. Uh -huh. um, so it's like, how would a psychoanalyst and an analyst and an analyst work? Yeah. Like, be curious about that? Like, would they just they wonder if this person in your life? Yeah, you know, it, it probably depends on the style of the therapist. So I'm inclined in moments like that. If, I, if I'm noticing um, a feeling inside of me, so this is the countertransference mm -hmm. piece, that's not a, my typical response to this individual. So if I typically experience them with generally warm feelings, uh, but on this particular day, I'm noticing a different response. The first point of reflection for me is, okay, what's going on in me that might be about you know, whatever I'm feeling at this moment, right? Whatever self-state that I'm accessing. And then what else does it tell me about what my patient might be experiencing? So a lot of times when the, the, the competition arises, and some of this is unique to, to my own personality style and my own vulnerabilities, is if I feel like I have to prove my competence through engaging um, the mind. So if I am over explaining things to my patients, oftentimes there's something that has been activated, like I feel as if I have to defend my worth through my competency. As opposed to being having access to, to feelings of sadness on behalf of my, of my patients or warmth and curiosity, I'm, I'm always trying to gauge that as I'm sitting with my patient, or even the couples, because there's this idea, this idea of um, couple transference, and we'll talk specifically what that what that looks like. So yeah. Go ahead. Could you revisit that term, perversion of what was agency. agency? Yeah, yeah. And I actually, there in a few slides from now, I'll go back to that idea. Yeah. Other comments. We're good so far. Um, all right, so then this next idea of defense mechanisms, this is our way of maneuvering, managing our life against unpleasant experiences. I mentioned earlier this idea that defenses work both for us and against us. They're adaptive and they become maladaptive when you only have a few defenses at your disposal. Right, so you all have used the defense of compartmentalization to be here tonight, right? You're probably thinking about the paper that's due on Thursday or the, the new patient that you're going to do an intake assessment on tomorrow and it has you kind of nervous, right? Um, but in order to be fully present here, 
you've had to use the defense of compartmentalization, being able to um, cut off these certain feelings or fears and, and desires and wants and wishes in order to be fully present in this moment. Uh, it's when, again, when we, we don't have access to um, a variety of defenses or we rely um, only on those primitive defenses that are, are, are more problematic, like splitting. You remember what the defense of splitting is? All good or all bad. All good or all bad, right. Dividing the world into black and white. Or here's another um, primitive defense, denial. Denial is another um, maladaptive defense when, um, when individuals, and we'll go over some of the levels of development within psychoanalytic literature, but um, denial can be particularly um, problematic because it cuts us off from reality. And a lot of accommodations have to be made when uh, you are utilizing denial. So, <clears throat> is there anything else I want to say about defense mechanisms? The last idea, I think we're good there. Uh oh, I just got disconnected. Hey, by the way, while I'm messing with this, when do you guys typically take a break? I realize we didn't hardly do any like housekeeping stuff. Would, do you guys take a break? No, no breaks? We just get out earlier. And you guys just can excuse yourself whenever. Uh -huh. All right, fair enough, then I'll keep going. Um, let me talk just for a moment about um, multiplicity or multiple self states. Um, there's been a shift in contemporary psychoanalytic therapy uh, away from this notion of the unitary self. Um, a lot of Winnicott's work focused on this idea that um, if, you, if you penetrate the defenses and if you um, seek long enough, you can find the real self. That therapy became sort of like this archaeological dig. Um, through the individual's history and penetrating defenses and you're kind of arriving at the true expression of the real self. Um, but due to the influence of a number of different disciplines, but primarily um, probably um, postmodernism, feminology, this idea of the self existing as sort of this unitary construct has been debunked. Really, probably the best way to describe the experience of the self is that it exists in multiple different self states. So the easiest way to kind of understand this is think about the various roles that you play in your life. Husband, wife, father, mother, friend, student. And each one of those areas in your life requires a different Part of you, of yourself. And you can access those different parts of yourself given the context in which uh, you find yourself in. Some would even go as far as saying the self doesn't exist outside of the context of relationship. That the relationship defines the self. So it's an idea that you need to be familiar with uh, and a, an idea that I think has it's really sort of revolutionized the way I've helped patients mitigate shame by talking to them about these different self-states. The, the, the self-destructive um, part of themselves can be understood as sort of like, I was, I was in my abnormal psychology class this morning, we were talking about dissociative identity disorder, we were talking about all these different altars, right? And the altars, um, are an expression of an isolated or cut off part of themselves. And so then they, the healing process for DID is to bring all of these altars back together into a, a, a cohesive uh, self-identity. 
Um, this idea of multiple self-states really aligns well with that idea. And by the way, dissociation uh, is, a, is a healthy defense. We all dissociate. Again, it, it goes back to um, how, how often, how intensely, uh, and how confi confined you are to the particular uh, defense. So this notion of the multiple self-states, I have found, I'm gonna go back to this idea of, of helping it mitigate shame. We can explore these different parts of themselves while also acknowledging the healthier self-states of the individual. And so it doesn't become um, this focus on, I'm, I'm just a screw up, I'm a lost cause. We look at that part of him or herself um, as just one simple uh, expression and understanding the need uh, of that self-state so that it could be witnessed and understood and incorporated back into what Donna Orange has referred to as the internal chorus uh, that defines the self. There are many different um, self-states that the... Um, that the internal course uh, can celebrate. It can understand in unison to one another. I have a video just to um, maybe engage you in a little bit of a, different, of a different way that highlights this notion of multiple self-states. I wanna I want see if you can pick up um, on the notion of self-states in this video. Many of you have probably seen this. I think it aired maybe three years ago during the Super Bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you some actions to do and just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. Now throw like a girl. between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time, they're already trying to figure themselves out. And when somebody says, you hit like a girl, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because they think they're a strong person. It's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as and what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swim like a girl? Keep doing it, because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl, or kicking like a girl, or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring, and you're still getting to the ball on time, and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl, and I, swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl and that's not something that I should be ashamed of so I'm going to do it anyway that's what they should do if I asked you to, to run like a girl now would you do it differently I would run like myself would you like a chance to redo it I can't run like a girl all of a sudden you win the race. Okay, pretty powerful stuff, right? 
So, talk to me. What 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 does this commercial uh, represent? 